Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, I want to talk about the different types of sampling. Now, if you're already familiar with the different types of sampling and you just want to see some examples, uh, go ahead and check out my next video after this one, okay? So let's go ahead and, and look at the different types of sampling or how we go about collecting data. Now, one important distinction to make is that uh, you might not even need to do sampling. For example, if you have access to all of the information uh, of your population, then you can do what is called a census. That means you simply look at every single, single piece in your population. Now, that's usually a great thing to do, but you can only do it if the entire population is available. So think of the, if the population is not that big. Most of the time, you do end up doing uh, a sample survey of some sort. And that's where we collect data from a representative portion of the population. So the idea is, you know, we want to know about the population, but we can't ask every little piece, so we're going to try and find a good representative. The hard part is finding that good representative, and that's why there's so many different types of sampling. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out a few of those different types. One of the biggest types of sampling is random sampling. In this type of sampling, uh, all objects in the population have an equal chance of being in the sample. So that means if you have 100 things in your population, uh, each one could potentially be included in the sample. Now this is usually pretty good, you know, uh, this type of sampling is free from bias, but unfortunately in practice it can be very difficult to carry out in practice. Well, another type of sampling that we might do is stratified sampling. In this type of sampling what we do is we start with the population and we start breaking it into non-overlapping groups. Now, from each of those groups, we then go ahead and take a sample from those groups. The important part that makes this stratified sampling is we make sure that the, that the portion of the sample is the same as the proportion of the group to the population. So that's kind of uh, you know, difficult to wrap your mind around, uh, but let's just take an, uh, a simple example. Say we had a population of 100 things, and we broke it into two groups, and one group had 20, and the other group had 80. Okay. So one group has 20, another group has 80. Now, when I go to look at these two groups, what I'm going to do is make sure that if I choose a portion out of here versus a portion out of here, that the one out of the 80 group is going to be larger. Uh, and in essence, you know, maybe I want 20% and 80% from each of these groups. You know, so the proportions are matching up to the, the entire uh, population. Now, this is a really good type of sampling because it can show tendencies inside each category. All right, let's move on. Another big type of sampling that you'll often hear is convenient sampling. This is collecting data without any systematic randomization. And at first glance, this type of sampling may seem like a really bad idea. After all, if, you're not, uh, if you don't have some sort of system and you're not randomizing things, do you really want to do this type of sampling? Well, the reason why uh, convenient sampling uh, is sometimes nice is it's often the easiest to do. Unfortunately, this one might be biased as well. Uh, but let me give you a quick example of when you might want to do a convenient sample. Okay, Say you have a huge pile of bricks down at the brick factory, and you're trying to determine if it makes a consistent brick. Well, you're not going to be going digging through the pile trying to get a nice random sample. You're probably just going to take a few off the top and measure those ones instead. So you're just grabbing the easiest ones you can, and that would be an example of a convenient sample. All right, the next one, a systematic sample. Items are chosen from a population according to a fixed rule. So again, this one might be biased, uh, but this one's a little bit easier to do than, say, just a complete random sample. So say you're trying to survey students uh, in the entire school, you get an entire list of students, and maybe you pick the every 10th one off the list, that's a systematic sample. All right, and quota sampling. This one is very similar to a stratified sampling, but watch the difference here. In a quota sampling, the population is broken into groups, and then a sample from each group is taken. Here's the difference. The proportion of this sample does not match the proportion of the group to the population. So if we go back to my little quick example of you know breaking down 100 objects into 20 and 80, 
If we're doing just a quota sampling, then maybe we'll take, you know, five from this group and five from this group. Uh, even though those groups are a different size, you know, we go ahead and take the same number from each. All right, and I have one more type of sampling to consider. This last one is known as cluster sampling. In this one, the population is broken down into many different clusters, and a random selection of clusters is chosen. Then within each side, uh, within each cluster, you do another random sample. So this one involves a lot of random sampling, but the difference is you're, you're kind of grouping them together into these little clusters first. So as you can see, there's many, many different types of sampling you can do. And really, you're looking for those key differences when trying to figure out what type of sampling uh, is being done, or when you're trying to figure out what you should actually carry out. So check out my next video for determining what type of sampling is being used. And thanks for watching my secret math tutor.